My name is Sarah. Welcome to the It's a Sarah podcast. Today it is Monday, March 18, 2024, and this is episode 132. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutch English. I love to knit, I love to crochet, and I love to talk. So that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. I make my episodes in Dutch and in English, so be sure you pick the right one. Okay, I have such a fun thing to share. I have a finished object. I'm not wearing it yet. I will put it on in a minute, but first some other things. This is the Lauder Vest. The Lauder Vest, um, the newest pattern from Rebecca from the Crea Bea podcast. Uh, it will be released this week and I will tell you all about it because I'm very excited. I just put it off the blocking mats. It's, um, it's still a little bit damp, I think you say, but I uh, already filmed my Dutch episode and uh, put it on. So it, it did warm up a bit by my body temperature. So it's okay. And it's hard jumping. I'm for, uh, for sure about that. Um, but before I will dive into that, I have to share a little crochet disaster this early Monday morning. It was not really a disaster, but I uh, I like to add some drama <laughs> every now and then. Uh, but I filmed a bit for you and I will, um, when you are watching the early morning, Monday morning, Sarah, I will put on my vest. So I will see you in a minute or a few minutes. Good morning. It is Monday morning, quite early, a little bit after eight. Uh, my husband and kids just left uh, for school and work. And um, uh, I'm enjoying uh, my hard jumping start of the day. Uh, I always start my day with a hard jumping activity. Um, now, not really start. Um, um, I start with doing some uh, practical things. Uh, at first, I, I make myself uh, ready for the day. And then I start making breakfast um, for the kids and for myself. I don't breakfast. I breakfast more later in the morning. But I prepare um, the, uh, all the cups, I fill them with fruit um, and uh, everybody decides if they want to eat it with yogurt or with porridge or with nothing. And um, uh, we start our day with, a, with some healthy vitamins. Um, and I also fill the lunch boxes in the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know if that's the same in other countries, but um, we bring lunch boxes uh, to school and, and quite often also to work. Um, and you fill it with sandwiches. In Dutch, we say boterhammen. Um, I don't make the sandwiches for my kids. They make them uh, uh, themselves. Um, but I always fill the lunch box with some um, vegetables or some fruit. So they have a healthy snack too uh, during the day. Um, so, and I also make some coffee and some tea. And when I am finished with all those things, I sit down here at my spot on the kitchen, at the kitchen table uh, with a uh, lovely cup of coffee and I do uh, a 30 minutes of crochet. I call it my, in Dutch I say, heerlijk handwerk half uurtje. And when I try to translate that to English, lovely lovely crafty 30 minutes i tried that before it doesn't sound cozy um i think uh hard jumping half an hour <laughs> it also sounds a bit weird in dutch it sounds funny but in english hard jumping 30 minutes now um i i work uh i always choose a specific work for those hard jumping 30 minutes in the early morning um I do this since several years now, but before I always had the thought that I had to earn my hard jumping moment um, with doing some uh, things in the house or some activities or some difficult tasks. And I started crocheting or knitting later in the morning. Um, when I, I, I did do my, do you say course, I guess, when I did the laundry and some vacuuming and, and all those kind of things. And then I uh, realized that it's actually quite weird to be so hard on yourself that you have to earn a hard jumping moment. You have to do something difficult before you earn it. And I, I thought that's not what I want to tell myself, that I have to earn 
uh, lovely moments for myself. No, uh, when you start your day with a lovely moment, the other things uh, go quite more easy um, because your battery is uh, full. So um, since a few years, I start my day with a heart jumping half an hour. So it's um, my battery already reloaded by sleeping <laughs> during the night. But it's also uh, making me very happy that I have something to do when I'm getting out of bed. I always, I, I am a morning person, so I don't, it's not very hard for me to get out of bed. But when I think of my heart jumping moment, I always jump very uh, excited out of bed. Oh, there's some crochet waiting for me. Oh, and yeah, that's, that's a nice way to start your day. Uh, so um, I, I always pick a specific work for my heart jumping moment because uh, it makes it more special to work only on it in the morning when I, um, uh, when I would pick a knitting project or a crochet project I work on during all day and night. It would be so special. It wouldn't be so special anymore. So it would be harder to get out of bed. Oh, I have a knitting project. I worked on this for, on that for hours yesterday. So, hmm. And now, yeah, the, the exciting uh, is really uh, nice to feel. Um, and, and, and every now and then I, I, uh, I cheat a little bit. So uh, then I pick it up and uh, work on it during the day, but, but most of the time not. So I uh, work on my Prague blanket and I told about it um, before in several episodes, so I won't deep dive in it. But um, I was at a point that I was planning my color combinations uh, now more. I was organizing my color combinations more. Um, I base my color combinations and my colors on the beautiful uh, colored houses and buildings in Prague and uh, the surrounding. Uh, but I uh, have one um, ball of yarn of each color. So I realized that I had to divide my colors more even so I won't run out of yarn uh, at the end of the blanket. And um, uh, so the little squares, I did some color planning um, to be sure every color is used uh, the same amount of times. And for the big squares, I thought I can pick my pictures and, and use those color combinations really um, based on specific building. And I did it and it was really fun, but um, I felt that also for the big ones, I came to the same color combinations every time. And I thought, oh, I have the same problem with the tiny ones. So I uh, also want to do, wanted to do some color planning for the big square. So I put all my yarn um, balls on the, I don't know how, the window shelf? Is, is it called a window shelf? In Dutch we say vensterbank. Yeah, I think window shelf is right. Uh, it's correct. Uh, so, and, and then I um, make a square of every color and then a second color I add. And now I had a bunch of squares. I'll grab my basket. And it was time to join them to my blanket. And I was really excited about that because um, uh, I worked on this last week and a little bit before, I guess. Um, and now uh, I can, uh, I could add them to my blanket or at least one. And then, then I had to make several tiny ones. Uh, so my blanket would grow again. So I was really looking forward to that. And um, I was adding the last, uh, the third round to my square. And um, there is a problem. We have a crochet drama. Uh, I will show you. Um, as you maybe can see, um, I had one granny cluster left and I couldn't um, uh, connect the square in the corner. It's supposed to be there. And I didn't get it because here I was okay. And I thought this, this place is right. But I realized I skipped one. And I thought, how could this happen? What is the problem? I didn't, I didn't realize. And suddenly I realized I forgot one round because for my bigger squares, I have the first color and look at this. I have two rounds of the second color and here's only one round. So that's why the square is too little and uh, why it doesn't fit. 
And then I realized I did that to all my squares, to all the other, um, no, I think, how many are they? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven squares. I forgot one round because they all have one round for the second color. And they are supposed to be ten rounds in total, seven rounds from color one, two from color two and one from color three. So I have to add one round to each square and um, I have uh, extra yarn ends to weave in. Lucky me, I'm a yarn end weave in lover. <laughs> I, I always tell myself that if you say it often enough, you, you will believe it. It works, re it works, works, it really works. Um, but I was a bit disappointed. I thought, oh no. And it's not the first time this happens. But because I made uh, all the squares right now, uh, I made the mistake on all the squares. The, 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 time, the first time when it happened, I only did make one square. So I thought, oh, I forgot one round. Oh, silly me. And I could edit immediately. But now <laughs> I have to do that with more than 10 squares. So um, that was a bit of a drama this morning, a bit of, <laughs> of disappointment, um, but it's, it's okay. That's, that's the way I, how I do my crafting. I, um, I make mistakes quite often and uh, yeah, I know myself. Uh, also for this, I, uh, it's, it's the best to just laugh it away and enjoy making the extra round. So I will uh, put all my squares on the uh, window shelf and um, put the right balls on them so I can I can work on the second uh, on the last round of color two this week yeah okay <laughs> A little bit drama on the early Monday morning, but also a lot of heart jumping uh, feeling when I put on my Lauder vest for the very, very first time. Of course, I did some fit checks while I was knitting it, um, but um, I finished it on Saturday and then I put it in my blocking. In, in, in my tube where I always block my garments in with a little bit of uh, Eucalan, a little bit of wool wash. And um, uh, then yesterday morning, Sunday morning, I did it in my um, spin cycle in the washing machine. And I always do that because I'm impatient when I block a garment because I want to wear it. I want to fit it. Um, and I put it on the blocking mats during big part of the Sunday and uh, during this night. And it was still a bit damp this early morning, but um, it's, it's, it's absolutely okay to wear. So I had my first heart jumping moment putting this on. It's always so lovely when you uh, try a new garment when it's all finished uh, and it's and the fit is good. Oh, that's really, I love that moment. It's, yeah, it, it's making me so happy. So I will tell you all about this vest in this episode. Uh, and of course, if you watch my episode, um, my earlier episodes, you already heard me telling about uh, this vest a few times and maybe uh, you will hear some things again, but um, that is what it is. Uh, this is the Lauder vest. 
Uh, Lauder is the newest pattern from Rebecca Klo from the Crea Bea podcast and it's coming uh, this Friday, Friday 22 it is, uh, is the release date. Um, and the Lauder, it's not only a vest, it's again one of those uh, bigger patterns of Rebecca. I really love her for doing that. I think it would also be... Um, reasonable when when she would split it in several patterns but she she's very kind to the knitting commu community to make such uh, patterns um, with a lot of sizes and a lot of opportunities so for this one in the pattern uh, you can find the instructions to knit a v a, 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 a vest with a v-shaped neckline also a vest with a round neckline a sweater with a round neckline, also a sweater with a V-shaped neckline, a cardigan with a round neckline, also a cardigan with a V-shaped neckline. And you can also make, and she told the instructions are not really in the pattern, but if you combine, you can also make a vest cardigan um, uh, with a button bend at the front. I really doubted about doing that. Um, uh, but when I was at the point I had to decide, I decided that I wanted a vest and maybe I want uh, a, a cardigan vest later. I think that's the perfect garment for spring in the Netherlands. A woolly layer that you can put on and off without going over your head. Uh, it's better for your hair, it's better for Sarah's hair. <laughs> um, and, and it's looking really nice. So I'm quite sure I will make uh, another one in a vest version. Uh, no, in a cardigan version. It's a bit distracting because vest is the Dutch word for cardigan. Uh, we call this a spencer. Uh, and I think we also use the word slip over, but we never call this a vest because a, a, a button band and sleeves, that's a vest in Dutch. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, yeah, uh, I did a test knit for Rebecca and um, I really, I really love her patterns. I really love doing test knits for her. I, I um, last, yeah, last weekend I was watching a bit of her episode, or maybe I did saw it on Instagram. She has another upcoming test knit with a lace cardigan, and I thought I, I need that in my life too. It's really addictive. Um, so I will apply to this that test knit, and when I when I'm not one of the test knits, it's also okay. I have to be patient. That's my main reason for doing test knit. I, I do not have a lot of patience. Um, I use this garn. Uh, this garn. Garn. Garn is a, a combination between Dutch and English. I use this yarn. It's a woolly yarn. Um, it is uh, Ulrika Natur from Svarta Faret, and I think that's a Swedish company. Although the yarn is not from Sweden, oh, it's a Swedish company. The yarn is from, it was on the label, made in India. Um, I don't know. I bought this yarn over a year ago, maybe two, um, uh, at Etna. Uh, and um, I'm not sure if it's a superwash yarn or not. It does remind me uh, to uh, the Peer Gint, Peer Gint yarn from Sandness. Um, it's a DK weight and I really love the color. It's a bit, uh, a bit heathered. All the shades of brown are hidden in it. And I think the color is called Chestnut. The number is uh, 327006. Um, yeah, I really loved working with this yarn. I don't know. It was my first time, so I don't know how it uh, holds up. That's always exciting. It's interesting to, um, to, to do a little review again when you have uh, wear, worn, when you, when you, uh, a few weeks later, when you did wear the, the, the garment quite often. So you can tell more about how the yarn holds up and how the shape holds up and all that information. So that's interesting. Um, but this is my, uh, I only wear it for an hour right now, so I can't tell you a lot about that. But I think the fit is perfect. I knitted size 1, and size 1, I have the pattern here, although the test knit pattern. Size 1 has a finished bust size from 78.5 centimeters, and um, 
I always think I need 90 centimeters, but I'm, I'm not sure. I have to do my measurements again, but because I don't think that's really true. Um, the, the size two was uh, 98 centimeters. There's quite a big amount of centimeters in between the sizes. And I, I thought that's way too big because I wanted my garment a bit fitted. I love them to be a bit fitted. I'm not really an oversized type. It's not matching. I do like it on other people, but it's not matching with um, my style of uh, clothing right now. I wear white dresses and white skirts and I need fitted garments on top of that because otherwise I'm a small person. It looks a bit weird. Um, so I chose the smallest size and I did my final measurements after blocking. And although I thought I got gauge, I didn't really check while, while I was knitting it. Uh, mine is a little bit narrower. I My finished uh, bust size is 84 centimeter. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe 85, but not 78.5, but it's perfect. It's, it's exactly how I want it to be. So uh, I'm a happy person. Um, it's a top down knitted construction. I really love this construction. You start at the back and with some increases, you make uh, the shoulder shaping and it's lovely because uh, the cable is running uh, on your shoulder and that's a lovely detail. And also when you finish the back, you pick up stitches for the front and also at the front, this cable, uh, uh, you do the increases uh, before the cable and it's running. Uh, along the neckline very smooth and nice and I really love that detail uh, and also this way of knitting a garment is really uh, uh, a way I love uh, knitting so I chose the v-shaped neckline and it's it worked out pretty good um, when I uh, joined in around, I started with knitting 3.25 millimeter needles. Rebecca also did. She said, I, I am a loose knitter and I also am a relaxed knitter, very relaxed. So I thought, okay, maybe that would be good, fine for me too. And I did make the swatch and it was uh, the, the right needle size for me. So I also did it when I joined in around, I went up one needle size to 3.5 millimeter needles because my back and forth knitting is a little bit uh, looser than my in the round knitting because there are less pearl stitches when you knit in the round. Um, and it worked out pretty good. Um, for the ribbing, I uh, went down to 2.25 millimeters. I'm always a bit struggling with the ribbing, except, uh, ex no, not except, especially uh, with my knit one pearl one. I'm a knit two pearl two lover and I always use that ribbing. I always choose for that ribbing. Um, but it's a little bit changing. I have a, a kind of refound love for the uh, Knit One Pro One, but I have uh, dancing stitches with Knit One Pro One. And I told about that in my last episode and there was some, a lot of suggestions about what to do on it. And I never really felt the need to work on neither stitches for Knit One Pro One because I didn't use that rib stitch quite often, but now now we are we seem to be in love. Maybe I I can uh, uh, learn uh, and can deep dive in the technical uh, suggestions to improve your uh, uh, ribbing stitch. So um, I didn't really do it. What I did do was I turned inside out at um, uh, the bottom ribbing. And it looks good, but not there's not a big difference with the outside. So I uh, with the inside. So I don't know if it was really necessary. I did it with a German short row because when you put your work inside out, the uh, you are knitting the other way uh, around, and your yarn is at the wrong side. So um, I made a German short row kind of thing to get my yarn at the right side. And um, when I when I finished my round, I already forget that. So I thought, hmm, what a weird stitch on my needle. Did I make an extra yarn over? What did I do? Sarah, you made a German short row. So that's a double stitch. And you know you have to be careful with your double stitches because when you drop your double stitch, you don't get it anymore. But I didn't think about that. It was only three minutes in between, <laughs> I think. So I dropped my double stitch. And then it got a mess and I ah, I didn't want to fix it. 
so I, uh, it's, I, I played a bit and I, uh, in Dutch we say schummel, I schummeled a bit. <laughs> um, and it's okay. It's not uh, very obvious. Um, I think it's here. Here it's happening. But it was not worth um, knitting one ra ra round backwards and doing it again. Uh, I was also doubting about... Um, doing decreases before the ribbing because the ribbing uh, always flares a bit out and because it was a test knit it was not in the test knit and I didn't do it and I'm happy I didn't do it because I think it wouldn't look nice when there when there were there were ribbing um de decreases in between the cables and the ribbing um it does flare a little bit out I saw I was taking pictures and I saw that but I don't care um, I did knit an extra centimeter under the armholes uh, because it seems a little bit too tight when I just followed the pattern for me and I'm very happy I did it. I think it's perfect now. Um, I also redid the bind off from the armholes. Uh, I'm The reason why I'm enjoying Knit One Pro One so much is that I'm also falling in love again, or maybe for the first time, with the soon bind off. I never really felt my heart jumping by the soon bind off. I thought it was a lot of work and I didn't really love the look and just that. But somehow it is changing. I don't really know what, what made that happen. But it's happening and I love that. It, it really gives me the trust that I never will be bored in my life, in my whole life again. Uh, because I love to knit, I love to crochet. And, and in that knitting and crochet, I have my favorite ways to do things, but they can change. So I can always learn new things and new techniques and always have new favorites. So I don't have enough time in my whole whole life to get bored again, I think. And it's really, feeling bored can also be very uh, useful for your creativity. But I don't have time for that again. <laughs> and any, any, anywhere, any, anymore, anymore, I wanted to say. Okay, um, but um, I did a regular bind off for the neckline. I always love it when the stitches are laying so nice and neat. And also I didn't want too much stretch, stretch in a V-shaped neckline bind off because that's not looking nice. And I also did a regular bind off with the armholes, but that was a, w a little bit too tight. So when I decided to do a soon bind off uh, at the bottom ribbing, I... Um, um, ripped out the regular bind off at the armholes and uh, made also a soon bind off and there's more stretch in it so it's really uh, it's really working out nice maybe i had to uh, it was better when i had when i added one row one round extra but i didn't so it's very small and narrow but it's okay because it's quite wide either so um yeah i really love the cables uh, i didn't use uh, cable needles, <coughs> a cable needle for my cables. Those cables are perfect for knitting cables without a cable needle uh, because you only have to travel two stitches every time. And um, uh, I, it was not my first time I did it, but uh, um, I also didn't do it a lot. M most of the time I use a DPN for cable, uh, for knitting cables, especially when it are more stitches that you have to turn back or forth. And um, uh, this time I didn't. I did use my metal needles. Uh, I also have the bamboo, but the metal needles, the point, um, the, the points are not really sharp, but it felt better than bamboo. And also my bamboo needles are for creating a more um, uh, even, even more even stitches at a at a stockinette fabric. Um, but but here that's not obvious, so it was perfect. So the metal needles did work. Uh, did work pretty good. Um, I think this is a perfect garment for beginner cable knitters. And I can imagine um, you might be uh, impressed by uh, the amount of cables. But I think that's why it, it's such a good beginner cable knitting. Because there are so many cables. So if you finish the garment, you are not a beginner cable knitter anymore. <laughs> Because you have knitted so many cables, but the the cables are quite easy. Um, 
there are two different cables used in the pattern and you most of the time have to cable the same uh, uh, how do you say it the same way the same the same can't the same i don't know the word you have left leaning and right leaning and most of the time are <laughs> but this is difficult left leaning yeah for me they are right leaning how oh, they are no it doesn't matter but most of the cables are the leading the same oh, no, the same front no not the same front the same in dutch we say kant the same oh i can stand this it's on the top of my tongue it's it's an easy word i know i know leaning the same way direction leaning the same direction i think that was the word i was looking for um and every now and then uh with this cable it's it's um uh, leaning left leaning right uh, uh so that's the only only uh cable you have to pay a little bit attention but with cable knit cable knitting you have one round with the cabling and then you have a few rounds that you could just can knit and a few pearls in between and then you have one round of cable knitting again uh, but that's okay it's really good for your knitting muscles when you are a beginner cable knitter and uh yeah it's really uh it's it's really nice and fun. So um, knitting cables without cable needle needles my really are added to my knitting muscles because I have uh, I have got a lot of practice right now with this garment. Um, every time I saw this cable uh, on the unblocked garments, I wasn't sure if I really liked that cable, but now it's blocked. I really liked it. And I, I, th that was what I thought. And every time I, I pulled it a little bit out, I thought, okay, now I do like it. Um, uh, the cables really need to be blocked, but it's really, uh, really lovely. I can imagine when I made, uh, when I will make another garment of this, I will choose another cable, not because I don't like it, especially for this one, but for a little bit of um, uh, um, um, challenge, no, not challenge, for um, officeling contradiction. No, that's also not the word. Um, because so I don't. Um, uh, annoying. <laughs> um, so I don't have to knit the same cables all over again. A little bit more of a fresh cable is uh, is nice. <clears throat> so uh, I already looked in my uh, books if I could find a nice one, and I think I did. But I'm I'm not sure because I also like this one. So we shall we shall see. I won't cast on in the very near future, I guess, because I have a lot of other projects on my knitting wish list. Um, yeah, uh, the the size, the length of the garment. I didn't follow the length of the uh, what Rebecca said. I even uh, I have no idea what she said. Uh, but I just I I really want to make this vest for on my skirts. I have a lot of skirts, and every time I make a garment for all my dresses, it is quite cropped, and it's too cropped to wear on my skirts. Uh, so that's not nice. So I decided I wanted to have this one for on my dresses. No, for on my skirts, and it needed to be a little bit longer. And the length is perfect So this way. I used a, a garment, uh, uh, which I already had in my uh, wardrobe, which I love the length. I can also do this, but I never, I always see people doing this, but I think it's very fashionable, but I'm not very fashionable. Oh. <laughs> but I can wear it that way too. Mm, and I also noticed um, when I finished the garment, I already did a quick uh, fit uh, fit session and I was wearing a dress and I can fold it the ribbing inside and then it's cropped and I also can wear it on a dress. And maybe I think it will stay this way, but I can also fix it with some stitch markers or whatever and uh, then I can wear on both. So yeah, really a hard jumping project. I loved working on it. Um, I um, worked on it for one month. I started, I cast it on on February 20 and I finished it on March 16. 
I did make some notes in my knitting book and also uh, a little bit of creativity. But before I will dive into that, I will show you that. Um, I uh, Let me see if I told you everything. Um, I used um, five and a half uh, yarn balls, 262 grams. And that was um, quite uh, what the pattern told me. And uh, um, I always weigh my... Um, garment when i finished so i i really want to be aware of how much yarn i am about to use for a specific garment so when i'm in a store that i have just a list in my head oh i need uh i need 300 grams for a vest i need so many grams for yeah it, the list is not complete yet <laughs> so i'm practicing but i always weigh my garment afterwards of course i can uh, uh, check the labels, how many yarn balls I used up, but uh, I want an exactly uh, amount of grams. So 262 it is for me. Um, yeah, I told everything, I guess. Oh yeah, the central decrease stitch was working out very nice now. And uh, I really love that in a ribbing. Um, it is quite deep. But to get the the centimeters here, I I it was necessary to to make it so deep. But I'm I'm very happy with the look of it. Yeah, and um, I make some notes in my craft book, and it's I I really always was uh, felt a lot of love for my craft book, uh, but it's on a low temperature for the last few weeks I, I was not really feeling it but it's really my knitting diary and i think this is my fourth book so i have quite some and yeah i really love looking in this and it's just a hard jumping and what i always see i make my notes um all the information some yarn and the labels and yeah some interesting notes i uh, that might be useful when i make another project or the same project and i used to uh, order my pictures that I mainly make for Instagram and then I uh, ordered them in store and I uh, pasted them in my book but I never did that it's too much work I we don't have a printer at we do have a printer at home but it's only black and white so when I want uh, my my pictures uh, colorful printed I uh, need to email it uh, so someone can print it but oh, it's also too much work and I know you have those little portable printers especially for pictures from your phone and a few weeks ago i was very doubting about maybe that will solve my problem that will make it more easy and fun to just make a sticker for in your knitting book but i don't i also don't want to own too much and then i reminded i remembered that i also love um uh drawing um my finished objects let me see if I can find, um, for example, this one, this is my skimming shawl and uh, I'm not a very advanced drawer. <laughs> I love drawing, but I never, I never do it. My low rider jumper is here. I never do it. So it's, uh, but, but the fun thing, my knitting book um, is uh, allowed to be imperfect. So also my uh, drawings are imperfect. So that's okay here. Yeah. This is my Remy camisole. I love those little drawings. My Tia top for my girl. Yeah, so it was, the drawings are really hard jumping. So, uh, but somehow I did forgot. And now I remembered, so I made a drawing and it was quite funny because knitting, uh, drawing knitted cables is quite a challenge. It is for me. So I was um, looking on Pinterest, how to draw knitted cables. <laughs> And I tried and I practiced and it, yeah, it did work out a little bit, but it was also messy. But I was really impressed by all the lovely uh, drawings I saw on Pinterest uh, of those hand-knitted sweaters. Uh, drawings of hand-knitted sweaters were really nice to see. But a lot of drawers used uh, aquarel. Is that a word? It, we have those color pencils. When you make them wet, you can paint with it. With a... With a oh. My vocabulary is not um, in the drawing uh, terms. I really don't know how to say it. Um, aquarel. Is aquarel an English word too? I don't know. But I did use aquarel. 
and uh, it I was really fun playing with it and I I realized okay it's not a good idea to do it directly in my craft book next time I have to do it on a separate uh, piece of paper and then cut it out and paste it in my craft book because the page at the back side is all uh, uh, getting wet and and also my pencil didn't like the water so it, it blew out it ran out um, but I was I was satisfied anyway. It was nice to do, and I loved the look of it. And then it was drying uh, on our desk, and my my crafting book was open. And then next day, my husband <laughs> saw it, and he said, "Oh no! Did you spill some tea on your drawing book or on your knitting book?" <laughs> and I said, "Tea? No. What made you think that?" And he said, "Oh, it it looks like it has been wet." And I said, oh, "I didn't spill tea. It was just my creative process." <laughs> <laughs> and I thought he was uh, bullying me. <laughs> is that is that too hard, bully? Bullying me? But um, he was very serious. So, but I will show you. I think you can understand why he thought I spoiled some tea. Uh, <laughs> it was fun, but maybe next time I will use uh, regular pencils, color pencils. Yeah. Um, but my craft book is hard jumping. My knitting book is hard jumping again. So I hope um, I, I will give it some love and, and will um, make some drawings. And uh, yeah, I will do something with it, I guess. It's also very mindful to when you finish a project to take the time to make a lovely page in your knitting diary. And it's very useful, the information which is in. The information is, is also on Ravelry. So I also know, uh, uh, write all the details down there. But when Ravelry uh, decides to not be Ravelry again, or, or something is going wrong with the internet of the computer, I don't have access to that information anymore. So I also want a physic place. Uh, so that's nice, but it's also very um, nice to take a slow moment to finish your project that way instead of r rushing through the next one. Um, so also part of that process is cleaning my project bag. Um, uh, I didn't do that yet, but all my needles and all the labels and the yarn are in here. So I also, um, uh, when I finish a garment, Taking pictures of it is uh, is part of the finishing. Clean my project bag, make my page in my knitting book, um, f um, uh, finish my Ravelry page, talk about it in the episode, and then it's all done. So we are quite near to the finish. But really happy with my newest uh, finished object. Um, yeah. I have another half finished object. I told about it in my uh, episode from last week. Oh, I forgot to tell. I had a lovely knitting trip with my friends. It was such a wonderful trip. Um, I didn't film anything. I hardly didn't take any pictures. Uh, it was just, uh, I felt so connected with them, uh, knitting and crocheting and chatting for, for more than two days long. It Yeah, with lovely people. Yeah, Sarah was a happy person uh, by then. It was really nice and fun. So I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I finished my chocolate sock. Uh, I told about it last week that I was doubting if it was really um, uh, working out the way I wanted to be. I want a really cozy, long sock that I could um, wear slouchy around my ankles and... Um, instead of leg warmers and I knit it with this chocolate hand dyed chocolate color wool from a Dutch dyer um, Atelier Sopra uh, and, and the yarn was a gift from my children for my birthday in 2022 so it was really time I would knit something out of it um, I was doubting um, I started with a brioche, with a half brioche stitch but that was not working out the way I wanted to be I turned down to smaller needles, two millimeter to be uh, to be exactly. Someone's walking. Uh, uh, no. He's leaving. There was a person at my front door, but he didn't need me, I guess. Um, uh, I turned down and I decided to just um, use a simple twisted rib stitch. 
uh, instead of knit one pearl one, I was really inspired by a, a sock. I think it was called the Mary Jane sock, but I'm not sure um, at the Petite Knit website. Just the simplicity of, of it, a very long sock, and I'm quite sure that was just a regular knit one pearl one. Um, the simplicity um, uh, was inspiring and was really uh, making me happy. Um, but um, knitting a, sim a very simple sock can also be boring. And I thought, I don't know, I don't know. But at some point I, I put the sock on and I thought, yes, this is what I want. And um, I was very happy that I decided to finish the sock and then decide what I would do next. Because sometimes I also have that with scrappy projects. Sometimes when you really are focused on the details of a project, um, um, it, 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 it might feel not hard jumping enough to finish it. Uh, but when it's finished and you zoom a little bit out, it is really hard jumping. And that's absolutely the case with this sock. When I, when I finished it, I thought, okay, this is exactly how I want it to be. So that was very nice. And you have to take a risk. Uh, because when you're not sure and you and you you don't know what you really feel, um, you are doubting. Will I put some all my time and effort to finish it? Um, when you take the risk by doing that, it can also work out the other way that you are finished it and think, okay, I am not satisfied. I have to rip out. So I I always ask myself the question: Am I okay with it when that happens? And yeah, most of the time I am okay. Most of the time the projects do work out the way I want to when I take that risk. So it's really nice and fun. Um, I had some doubts about the border. I thought, do I want a border or no border or what do I do? And then I uh, remembered this lovely, yeah, it's kind of a braid thing um, with stitches laying horizontal. Um, there's a lot of stretch in it. Uh, I, the, the, someone sent me uh, a reel on Instagram uh, with a very bright and yellow uh, cardigan uh, which uh, a knitter was doing this and it's very easy to do. I can't explain it. I did explain it in one of my Heart Jumping Friday videos in the beginning, I guess, but you have to be a member of my YouTube channel to, uh, to have access to those videos. Um, but it was really exactly what it, what I needed and I thought maybe it's fun to do just a regular knit one pro one but that was not looking nice so I did go further with the twisted rib and it was really it's it's exactly enough uh, there is a kind of ribbing a, a kind of etching of the of the sock but it's uh, yeah it's uh, not disturbing the pattern too much I did use a soon bind off again. I'm in love, so I, I use it all the time. <laughs> I never did that for a sock. I always do the extra stretchy bind off, but I don't think that's a very neat bind off. And yeah, I was I was curious how this would work out, and it worked out pretty good. Because the sock is so long, it's 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 actually quite a high knee sock. Do you say it like that? Um and um I I will not wear it a lot that way, maybe when it's very cold, but I wear it more slouchy around my ankles. And when I put um, uh, this part on the widest part of my leg, it is tight, but when it's over that widest part, it's okay. Then it's exactly uh, good because it's holding up. When it would be too wide, it would be too loose. So um, I think this works out pretty good. So I love it. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the sock. I will put it on my sock blocker, so you can. Socks are always looking better on the sock blocker, I guess. Um, yeah, this is the way I wanted it to be: slouchy around the ankles, very cozy feeling, and uh, yeah, very lovely. I did use 60, sti 60 stitches too instead of my 56 stitch, but I went down one needle size. These are knitted on two millimeter needle size and uh, 60 stitches seems to work out perfect for me. And I really, I really was thinking about, oh, I want twisted rib socks in other colors too. Uh, long twisted rib socks. I just love the look of them. So I have some beautiful skeins, color changing skeins, also hand dyed which I maybe want to try the same. Yeah, really lovely. I also, uh, I, I um, 
In one of my notes, I found that I needed three grams of sock yarn for knitting a toe. So I thought then I can make a ribbing with three grams too. Um, I did knit nine rounds of ribbing. I don't like knitting nine rounds for ribbing. I always go five, 10, 15, 20, nine is just a not number. I don't like it, but um, I really didn't want to take the risk that I didn't have enough for the soon bind off. And I just have those, the, the little tiny, tiny bit of yarn left. So that was a good decision. And this will go into my northeasterly blanket. And I hope there will be a little bit finished of the second sock. I just, Divided my skein in two yarn balls of 50 grams and I will knit this one up too. I won't measure, measure. of course I will measure for the foot, but I just will knit up the leg. And it's not a problem when they are not exactly, uh, they don't have the same amount of rounds exactly because it's a, a slouchy sock. So um, I just cast on the toe yesterday evening and only did a few rounds and then it was time to to do something else. Ah, I didn't go to bed, but I did something else. Um, and uh, now it will be my on the go way uh, work. Uh, I always have to love to have a project in my back sack that I can knit on all the time uh, if I have some time left. And uh, this is perfect for that. So really happy with that one. I have a lot of other projects on my needles, will, which I want to finish before I will cast on something new. I will cast on a little uh, work uh, tomorrow but that's with a deadline um, but I really want to use my discipline and willpower to finish all the other projects before I will dive into the summer and uh, spring uh, works it's really it's, the end of winter is near um, and and it's really hmm, I have mixed feelings about it I love I love the weather I think may, yeah I really love autumn and winter and spring weather is also okay. I love the change of the seasons. It gives me a good energy. So that's really lovely. But I don't want to have it too warm. When the Dutch summer is you can wear barefoot in your sandals and you need a cardigan, then Sarah is happy. But quite often it's a little bit warmer. <laughs> that's not uh, necessary for me. But uh, uh, within a few weeks I have to change my wardrobe. Because I don't wear my warm winter woolly things when it's warm then then they got itchy on me and I have a few summer garments um, stored in black uh, no not in black in plastic boxes uh, so I will change that and it makes me feel feel a bit emotional that it's that time of the year already <laughs> um, but time flies so it will be September very soon that's also uh, a calming thought I have some blue skeins here I I'm not quite sure what I shared in which episode because I make episodes in Dutch. I make episodes on Friday for my members uh, on YouTube, Heart Jumping Friday episodes. And I, I don't know what I make them in Dutch and English too. So I am not sure what I shared where, but I will start a new proje project tomorrow and it will be a blue rabbit. I will knit a blue rabbit. And um, not for myself, it's for my little niece. My little niece will turn three at the end of the month. And my, sus my sister and her husband, they keep telling me that she is dreaming about a blue rab rabbit knitted by Sarah. Uh, and she uh, wakes up quite often in the morning. Oh, Sarah knitted a blue rabbit. It's so beautiful. And they heard her parents tell it to me. And I'm... I'm a little bit worried they are making a fool on me. They are fooling me because my sister knows that I don't like blue and I don't like knitting um, stuffies. Yeah, that's the word, I guess. Uh, so, and but, but she also knows that I, I want to knit everything for my little niece because I adore her. So, so that maybe they, they fool me, but um, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's true. <laughs> I think it's true. So I found a pattern of a lovely rabbit with all the garments, with a whole, whole wardrobe. It's very lovely. And I forgot the name. Little Cotton Rabbits. I don't know. I will insert a picture. Um, uh, and I did receive the pattern in my reverie uh, inbox. It's very lovely. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't aware of it. Uh, I am for quite a while now. But you can... Um, uh, you can um, gift other revelers, revelers. You can give away patterns on revelry when you want to surprise someone with a pattern in her inbox of his inbox. Uh, you can do that, and it's very lovely. Uh, I receive a lot of patterns of lovely viewers in my revelry inbox, and the first times that that happened, I was a bit confused because sometimes it are patterns I don't really want to knit or crochet and I always felt a bit um, uh, guilty about it so that I thought oh yeah it's really lovely but I'm not sure if I really want to make it right now or ever uh, but I, uh, I decided that I could just enjoy the heart jumping feeling of someone. There are always lovely messages go coming through, coming with the patterns that someone uh, want to send me um, such a lovely pattern. And also it's, it's for the designers. It's also very nice, of course. So every now and then I do it too, because I think it's such a little surprise to find a, a pattern in your inbox. So when you uh, didn't know that that you could do it uh, but you like the idea of surprising a knitter uh, in uh, with a pattern then absolutely just do it and uh, not, not, I, I receive enough so <laughs> thank you thank you but I receive enough there are a lot of knitters uh, that maybe not receive a pattern ever but you want to share the heart jumping moment with them too so it's also nice when you have contact with other knitters at the other side of the world and and sending something is so expensive you can just send it through Ravelry so it's really a yeah I, I love that function so I received a pattern from a lovely Dutch knitter in my inbox and um, uh, I don't love blue um, so I don't have a lot of blue yarn I found this yesterday but I already decided that I wanted to use this unicorn blue skein of yarn, uh, Let Lopi. That's a little bit um, uh, calming me down because I love Let Lopi. Uh, and also Let Lopi is quite forgivable yarn. And I really think I need forgivable yarn w when I'm knitting a stuffy <laughs> because all the details. Uh, it's a bit of a unicorn blue and pink within. It's uh, actually a, a, a yarn ball from the stash of my my youngest girl but i was allowed to use it so as he wants to knit a rabbit too and she can pick uh, another color she loves more from my stash and i must confess i i really want to knit a brown rabbit or a white or whatever not a blue one but i also think it's very funny that she is dreaming about the blue one so i will make a blue one with a dress or whatever with some garments and uh, yeah you will, uh, I will share my experiences with you uh, probably next week. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I, uh, I have quite some knitting time this week, so that's very nice and very good. Uh, I hope you will have it too. Um, I think it's very important, especially when you don't have a lot of knitting time or crochet time or whatever time, that you are aware that you really uh, give yourself enough hard jumping moments uh, because I think it's always important to um, uh, reload our battery and it, it can be while craft crafting, but it can also be walking or reading or gardening or sewing or whatever um, uh, but it's important that you uh, that you take the time uh, especially when you're busy uh, to uh, reload your battery as much as possible okay thank you for watching if you are a member of my heart jumping friday channel a little part of the youtube channel here uh, for members then i will see you this friday uh, I am answering questions right there and uh, sharing other parts of my life and it's really, uh, I am really having a good time there and uh, I really receive nice messages and comments so I think I'm not the only one enjoying it and it's very special for me that you are with quite some people there. There are so many people uh, member and uh, that's really hard jumping for me. So thank you for that. And uh, if you are not a member, it's also okay. I, I can absolutely understand. It's not um, 
uh, possible for everybody to become a member and uh, and also not everybody's interested um, uh, I think it's uh, it's so nice that there are so many possibilities to watch on YouTube for free so that's also uh, possible so I will be here next Monday too okay thank you for watching um, have a nice week and I will see you next time bye bye